Greetings, welcome to Jesus and Mary Inseparable. The title of this video is uh, The Miraculous Meadow Supports the Dome Earth, or the Flat Earth. As always, let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jesus and Mary, we love you, save souls, Amen. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Here we have a, a page called St. Catherine Labori and the Miraculous Meadow. We have the introduction, the story. Now St. Catherine Labori, uh, she was around in the 1800s. Her body is entombed in this glass case. And as you can see, it's still incorrupt to this very day. Uh, you can go to the convent in France and see it for yourself. Her body has not decayed, which is miraculous. And there are many incorrupt bodies in the Catholic Church. To prove that the Catholic Church is the true church. Uh, but anyway, the point about the miraculous meadow is that a lot of Catholics use the miraculous meadow uh, apparition to support the idea that the world is a globe, a sphere. When in fact, if you look at the text, Honestly, it's clear that it doesn't support the globe earth theory, the, the sphere earth. It supports a dome earth, the flat earth. So let us look at the facts of the apparition. Here we have the introduction. When the young lady enters the convent. And uh, here we have the first apparition. The first apparition in 1830. Came on the feast of St. Vincent. July 19. <laughs> anyway, one night, a beautiful child awoke St. Catherine from her sleep and said, Sister de Labori, come to the chapel. The Blessed Virgin is waiting for you. So Catherine, St. Catherine went to the chapel and found it a blaze of lights as if prepared for midnight mass. She knelt down at the communion rail and suddenly heard the rustle of a silk dress. The Blessed Virgin, in a blaze of glory, sat in a chair like that of St. Anne's. St. Anne is the mother of Mary, the Blessed Virgin. So Catherine rose up and then went over and knelt, resting her hands in the Virgin's lap and felt the Virgin's arms around her as she said, God wishes wishes to charge you with a mission. You will be contradicted, but do not fear. You will have the grace. Tell your spiritual director all that passes within you. Times are evil in France and in the world. A pained expression crossed the Virgin's face. Come to the foot of the altar. Graces will be shed on all, great and little, especially upon those who seek them. Another community of sisters joined the Rudebach community. That's the community where St. Catherine was. And the community will become large. You will have the protection of God and St. Vincent. I will always have my eyes upon you. In brackets, we have this prediction was fulfilled when in 1849, Father Etienne received St. Elizabeth Seton's Sisters of Emmitsburg, MD, into the Paris community. Mother Seton's sisters became the foundation stone of the Sisters of Charity in the US. Then, like a fading shadow, Our Lady was gone. A few months 
Later, the second apparition, four months passed. We had another apparition on the 27th of November, 1830. While making my meditation in profound silence, I seemed to hear on the right-hand side of the sanctuary something like the rustling of a silk dress. Glancing in that direction, I perceived the Blessed Virgin standing near St. Joseph's picture. Her height was medium, and her countenance indescribably beautiful. She was dressed in a robe of the colour of the dawn, high-necked, with plain sleeves. Her head was covered with a white veil, which floated over her shoulders down to her feet. Her feet rested upon a globe, or rather, one half of a globe. Ching, ching. One half of a globe, that means a dome. So the vision, she was standing on a half globe. People always depict Mother Mary when they talk about this apparition, they always depict Mary standing on a globe, but it's not, it's a half a globe. And if you look at the Marcus Meadow itself, which I have here for you, let's put it up to the camera for you. Mm -hmm. She's clearly not standing on a globe. There's definitely not a globe. That's a half a globe, if you can make it out. I can. It's definitely not a globe. A half globe. It's a dome. That's the dome earth. And her hands are protruding out, and the rays of grace coming forth and spreading out over the whole globe, over the whole half globe, sorry. Over the dome earth. Beautiful. So her feet rested upon a globe, the story says, the apparition, or rather one half of a globe, for that was all that could be seen. Her hands, which were level with her waist, held in an easy manner another globe, a small globe, a bit like a, hmm, I'm going to say bowling ball, but a lot smaller than that, half of the size of a bowling ball, and that was a figure of the world. Now that also is not proof of the earth being a globe because as we read on, let's read on before we jump to conclusions, her eyes were raised to heaven and her countenance beamed with light as she offered the globe to our Lord. So our mother Mary had that globe in her hand and she passed it to the Lord. As I was busy contemplating her, the Blessed Virgin fixed her eyes upon me, and a voice said in the depths of my heart, This globe which you see represents the whole world, but especially France. And it also represents each person in particular. You see, people will jump to a conclusion again and say, Ah, that globe in her hand, maybe that's the proof of a globe earth then. You defeat one argument and they put another one, this this one here, the globe in the hand. Maybe they would jump to that example and say, ah, that must mean that the world's a globe then. But indeed, as we read the whole sentence, the globe that she had in her hand was a, a mere symbol of the world and France and each person in particular. So that globe represents each person. How? It's just a symbol of that person, a symbol of the soul. And it's also a symbol of France. I mean, how can it be a symbol of France? It looks nothing like France. We, know, we all know what France looks like on the map. It's certainly not a ball, it's certainly not circular. So the same with the world. The world's not spherical, but the globe that our Blessed Virgin had in her hand just represents the world, and it represents France, and it represents each person. Let us continue. St. Catherine says, There now formed around the Blessed Virgin a frame 
rather oval in shape, on which were written in letters gold these words, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us, of course, to thee. Then a voice said to me, Have a meadow struck upon this model, or those who wear it, when it is blessed, will receive great graces, especially if they wear it around the neck. Those who repeat this prayer with devotion will be a special man under the protection of the Mother of God. Graces will be abundantly bestowed upon those who have confidence. Similar story to the Divine Mercy, which is today. Providence. So this is a picture of the meadow. This is the front and this is the back. As Our Lady said, the M with the cross and the two hearts tell enough. She's saying that the cross with the M and the two hearts is self-explanatory. The cross is the cross, M is for Mary, Mother Mary, and the two hearts, obviously the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. And we have the words there around the outside. And as you see there, it's a half, it's a half globe. It's not a globe, it's a half a globe. Thank you, Mother Mary. So, this is food for thought for people who think that the miraculous meadow proves that the earth is a sphere. And uh, we need to add one final point that uh, the world, sorry, the word globe is merely another word for world or earth. And the world, the word globe does not necessarily mean a spherical world. It just means the world, which is clearly to humble people. The world is a dome earth. Thank you. As the Bible says. So there we have it. See, this is the meadow, half a globe and picture of it is normally like this people as you see here in this example someone has depicted it as a globe very chilly and that's uh, what often happens but as you can see it's just a half a globe and as we see in the apparition text itself her feet rested upon a globe or rather one half of a globe so there we have it Hope that's been good food for thought for you. As always, pray the rosary every day. And pray for the conversion of Russia. And it's like we all need to have one of these miraculous meadows and wear it around our necks. I must admit I've not been wearing mine around my neck. I put mine on my rosary and I keep it my rosary in my pocket. Uh, but I got a miraculous medal on my rosary, so maybe I can wear my rosary around my neck. <clears throat> Here we are. Praise the Lord. Praise your Mother Mary. And this story, finally, uh, is the uh, beginnings of the miraculous story of Alphonse Ratisborn, a famous Jew, a wealthy Jewish banker. And uh, in 1841, he was given a miraculous medal and converted on the spot. He was a blasphemer and hater of Catholicism. And after his, after putting the medal, he converted and became a great Catholic. Became eventually became a priest, taking the name of Father Alphonse Mary after the Mother Mary, and he worked 30 years in the Holy Land and established several institutions. Beautiful. So let's finish up with a prayer in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Mother Mary. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us to have more trust in you. Trust is a very important ingredient. Mother Mary, let flow the graces upon us that we need for today and to be successful in our vocations. Hey, Mother Mary, praise you, Mother Mary. 
Jesus and Mary, we love you. Save soul.